Hi and welcome to Kaylin Dash Tech Lesson Nine. Um, in this lesson, we'll be configuring the LNS further, uh, so a continuation from Lesson Eight. Okay, in the um, design and build of a transit ISP. Um, for, so from an L2TP DSL perspective side. Okay, so um, I've gone ahead and configured up the dynamic profile uh, because that would have taken quite a long time. Um, um, and it just really needs explaining. Junos interface name, these variables that are utilized, uh, this just means the SI interface, okay? It's just pointing to the dynamic interface. Anything that's framed is all to do with the routing, the next hop, um, as you can see, metrics, preferences, tags. Um, but because it's framed, what it means is it's, 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 it means it's dealing with information that's being um, processed or, or sent forwarded by the AAA servers uh, because we're dealing with PPP L2TP we've got to do um, dialer options there, there um, stated there to keep alive stated here IPv4 from the um, loopback interface is the gateway IPv6 I've included both of these um, because we will more than likely go dual stack later on to show you how to configure up the IPv6 side of things um, and then we've got our IPv6 managed configuration, another stateful. The NDRA is a uh, network discovery uh, router advertisement. Okay, um, so if you know about IPv6, you'll know what that is. Um, this is not an IPv6 lesson. So what we've got to do is on top of that, we have to configure up our AAA profile, our group profile, um, our access profile, um, so the L2TP profile, and our tunnel group. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. So let's start with set access. Uh, sorry, profile, and it's going to be a we'll we'll need to call it something intuitive. So as so that we know what it is, we're going to call it AAA profile. Okay, um, and we have to tell it the accounting order which we want as a radius. So we don't want it local. We want the accounting to go to the radius server. Okay. And we also have to do the same for the authentication. Okay. So we'll go back to there and we'll do the authentication. Uh, authentication order. Also radius. Okay. We have to tell it the address for the accounting and the authentication. So we'll go to here and we need to specify radius because obviously we're talking actual radius now. Um, so, <coughs> so radius, authentication server, and we'll give it the address 192.168.1.18. This is the address that is on the interface of the server. Okay, uh, and then we're going um, accounting server. So let's put that in there as well. It's going to be the same same address, 192.168.1.18. Uh, then we have to give it the secret uh, between um, the radius server and the LNS. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, right, for some reason, it, ah, it's because of my spelling. My apologies for that, guys. Um, so 192.168.1.18, secret. And we'll just use testing. One, two, three. It's a pretty generic one. Um, Okay, so now we need to actually tell it the accounting order, but it's in it's it's not the same as the accounting order that we had before. As you'll see, they're actually separated now. Okay, what what we're doing is we're saying with the accounting order on the radius, everything that I add below this, take that into account when dealing with the accounting. Okay? So that's the major difference. In the first one, we were telling it radius, not local. Now we're telling it the accounting order, 
within what we want to happen. So we're going to say here, so it's accounting, and we're going to do a stop on failure, okay? And the reason we're going to do a stop on failure is because it's a bit pointless doing any accounting on something that's failed, okay? This next one is a little bit different, so we're going to do a stop on deny, okay? Now, what happens here is, um, sorry, access deny. Um, what happens here is, uh, if somebody is denied access, we'll still get the accounting information with regards to their attempt and their failure. Um, so we will still have that information. But what we don't want to do is continue any accounting for th that system or for the, the AAA server to still hold that information, even though there'll be no information coming in. We need that cleared ASAP. Okay, so that's why we're utilizing that. Um, an update interval for updating this information, 10 seconds, I'm going to set it for, okay. Um, and then we're also going to do a volume time, okay. Um, so, but it's only statistical information. And um, this is kind of... Um, important for northbound interface um, because what you want to do is, is is this is going to give you the stats for the volume the volume of traffic for that given CPE or for that given end subscriber um, and the time okay and so depending on what your um, northbound payment methods are um, for information gathering with regards to that this is important Okay, so that's the AAA side of it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to set an access group profile. Okay, so let's do that now. Set access group profile. And again, let's call it something intuitive. So we'll call it L2TP-group profile. Okay, and... These are all the PPP settings, so we're gonna, which is the point to point. Uh, so we're gonna do an idle timeout to start with, um, purely because we are gonna have a maximum tunnels um, or subscribers per tunnel. So we need to make sure that if there is any idling anywhere, that with no information going across, that that um, uh, not the actual tunnel itself, but the subscriber within the tunnel is timed out. Okay, and they um, will have to do a reconnection. Uh, so, as we carry on with our PPP settings, now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a PPP options, and you've got as authentication PAP or CHAP, so I'm going to set both so that we can utilize PAP or CHAP, okay? Um, if you want to look into what those do, basically one of them... It's dependent on how your database is formed for your usernames and um, uh, passwords. But one of them, CHAP, will um, encrypt traffic across the wire, but it doesn't encrypt at the database. However, there are obviously um, implementations you can put in place and configurations that will encrypt that data anyway. Whereas PAP sends across plain text, but encrypts in the database. So it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. Um, so it's entirely up to you as to which you want to use there. Most people prefer CHAP. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we're also going to set an MTU size on the PPP side of things. Um, and the reason we're doing this is because the tunnel itself will, and the LCP negotiations, will have a slight overhead. Um, what we don't want to do is we don't want to... Um, uh, end up with fragmented packets. So uh, we want to set this a little bit lower than its default of 1500 or 1524 uh, Ethernet um, because with the added headers on the front, it'll end up um, doing exactly that to the packets, and we don't want that. So we set the MTU to that. Uh, don't confuse that with the MSS. We'll get into the MSS at a later point. We also need to configure up the Keeper Lives here. Okay, so we are going to go back to here, and we're going to configure 
I'll keep alive. And our keep alive is going to be 30. Okay. That completes, that completes the group profile. Now we need to set an access profile. Okay. So now we're going to do set another access profile. With slightly different settings. Um, and this one we're going to call L2TP dash profile. Uh, and an important point now, we're going to use client. Um, and the client is, you can call it a name. If there is no name because your downstream service provider is not going to forward that information, and some don't, um, some only forward certain information um, from the um, CPE, so if it doesn't deal with an actual client name from a CPE perspective, then what you can do is you can put default in here. Most um, downstream providers will use a default on their um, access concentrators. Okay, so what I'm going to do though is because we are going to know what we're utilizing, I've just come up with a name. This is just the name of a client, uh, a pretend CPE, uh, 21CN. Um, we need to give it L2. L2 TP uh, and uh, maximum sessions. This is what I was on about the sessions per tunnel uh, on a one gig interface, 4,000. Okay, is what we're going to set it to. Um, and moving on. Um, Another section that we need to look at is the interface ID, and that's called within the um, the dynamic uh, profile. So we have to make sure this is correct. Uh, we're going to call it L two TP dash encapsulation. Okay, that's the interface ID. Uh, we need a shared secret for the actual tunnel itself. Um, not like we had before. That was a secret between the AAA server and the LNS. This is an actual shared secret between the LAC and the LNS to bring the actual tunnel up. Okay, so we are going to put in there, and I'm just going to put in, um, to be honest with you, something simple at the moment. Obviously, you're going to want something a little bit more complicated than that. And in fact, it'll probably be the downstream ISP will probably supply you this information anyway. Um, and so the user group profile is the one that we created a minute ago will be the L2TP. So let's um let's just go back to there and we're gonna type in there user group profile. And even if you do a question mark, it'll only come up with the one, the L2TP. There you go. Uh, rather than creating a new one because we don't have one. Uh, yeah, or we're not going to create a new one. Sorry, we only have that one. And it obviously won't commit without that name being correct. Okay, so that's the group profile um, configured. Uh, sorry, the L2TP profile, which calls the group profile. And now we need the actual tunnel group, which calls everything and holds it in one place for the lack to read from. Okay, so this is where it all, all comes together. This is where it, it all glues together at this point. So if we do a set, services l2tp tunnel dash group um, we're going to call this lack okay because it's a link across to the um, um l2tp um sorry the uh, yeah the access concentrator so l2tp dash the access profile, uh, no, it's done it already. Uh, so the L2TP access profile is going to be L2TP profile. Okay, puts it in there for you. Um, the AAA access profile, we know what that is as well. That's the AAA profile that we created. The Local gateway address. Now, the local gateway address is the address of the interface that faces the um, access concentrator. And the 
chances are this is an address that the um, downstream ISP has provided to you anyway. Um, but we're not using that. We're just, um, we're obviously uh, utilizing uh, the addressing that we've, well, just basically made up here. Okay, 192.168.1.13 is the address on that interface. Okay, so that's that part done. Now, we have to set a device pool. For a AAA system has to have a device pool, okay, associated with this. So we're going to set a service device pool called LNS. And this will also be configured on the interface. I'll show you that in a minute on the service interface, okay? Um, we also need um, the dynamic profile configured in here. Well, none of this is going to work. So we go back to there and we'll do dynamic profile um, and we've named ours DYN LNS profile. Okay, now we have to do, uh, because if we don't do this and we try and commit this, if we do a commit check, you'll see what the issue is. If we try and do a commit check, it tells you that there is no service de device pool yet. There's nothing defined and it has to be defined on the service interface. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do set services, service, service device pools, pool, LNS, interface, and our service interface that we are using, which is zero, zero, zero. Okay. Now, providing I haven't missed anything, which I'm pretty certain I haven't, we do a commit check. And now we have a configuration check that succeeds. So we're going to commit that. Okay, now if we do a run show configuration. Oh, sorry, we'll do it in a more easily readable format for you. Um, we'll display set that. Okay, so we should now have what is starting to look like a really good LNS configuration. Okay, obviously there's still things missing, but it's starting to look more like a proper configuration now. Okay, so we have our AAA profiles, we have our group profile, we have our access um, L2TP profiles, and we have our tunnel groups as well as our dynamic profile up here. Okay, so it's really starting to come together now, um, from an LNS perspective anyway. Um, so for the moment, that's the end of that lesson, but that will have configured the dynamic side of the LNS for us from a basic perspective. So I'm giving you here a working profile that we will see working later. Okay, all right, brilliant. Uh, see you in the next lesson. Thanks, bye.